It's a shark. The shark is coming on. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. My child is not the only child that lives in this house. back to the channel my name is Sarah and this is going to be a very casual uh, chat about goals for 2023 while I put some sealant and Mod Podge on a few little craft things that my daughter painted this weekend so uh, let's get into it <laughs> so for 2023 my goals um, are pretty loosey-goosey they're, they're usually loosey-goosey I mean I definitely have things that I want to do and that I want to um, aim for, right? Uh, but I'm one of those people who, I'm very type A. I like lists, I like check boxes, but I also have ADHD and I am very um, anxious. <laughs> uh, and that impacts a lot of stuff. So goals sometimes can be overwhelming and uh, overstimulating. I can also hyper focus and burn myself out very quickly. So uh, in my old age of 30 something, I have reached a decision that it is best for me to just take goals um, as <laughs> suggestions that I make for myself, right? Um, I don't beat myself up for not succeeding, um, but if I do succeed, I'm extremely happy about it. So uh, the first and probably the easiest goal that I'm definitely going to beat unless meet unless something happens is my books to read in the year is going to be set to 150 um, and I'm setting that on Storygraph and on Goodreads that's um, I've used Goodreads for for years I think 2014 is what my profile says um, and I know Goodreads has its problems and it's not a great website and I honestly do kind of hate it uh, but it's great for tracking so at the moment I'm using it for tracking and I do post reviews because I do net galley arcs that sort of thing so that goal is going to be set to 150 and so is Storygraph where I also try to keep those same reviews and everything posted. Um, for my own tracking reasons, um, I'll probably hit closer to 200 because I, on my own spreadsheet, I track a lot of stuff I don't track on Goodreads. Like I'll track single issues, um, I will track occasionally picture books if we read them enough. Um, <laughs> Which, there's been a few picture books that uh, Little Girl has been very, very into lately that we have been reading several times. So those will probably go on my spreadsheet at the end of the year just because at this point I have almost memorized Nanette's baguettes. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's one of those things where like, I'm happy to read a book a week or a book a month. I think if you read anything, you're, you should be proud of yourself and I am proud of you. Um, it's just that for me, reading is the thing I do when I'm down, when I'm tired. Um, it's very, very rare that I'm not reading. So that's just where I'm at. Um, again, it's a personal goal. Um, my husband reads like a book a month, sometimes two. It depends on what we're buddy reading and stuff. You know what? Fucking do it, man. I'm proud of anybody who gets anything done. I have family members who don't read books at all, and it makes me so sad. Um, yeah, you should be proud of any goal you set for reading, and reach reading anything is a good thing. But anyway, I hate Goodreads goals and number goals like that. Um, I hate talking about them, because <laughs> inevitably that conversation comes up, and I think anyone should be proud of anything they read, no matter what the number is. Um, that's just where I'm at with that. But... I know a lot of people, oh, you read so much you can say that, which, I mean, that's fair. I agree. I do read a lot. I'm coming from a place where that's my main hobby, but still. Anyway, I'm rambling. I do that a lot. The next goal I have, I've got a little sheet I'm looking at while I do this, um, is a my read before I buy. So I'm looking to, before I buy a book, I want to have read it or have read a sample and a good amount of reviews. And I'm looking for a 60-40 sort of deal. So 60% of the books I read, I want to have read them before I buy them. Or, like I said, sampled and uh, checked reviews, that sort of thing. Uh, just This is just something to keep my spending in line and keep my uh, acquisitions in line. I have a lot of books. I have less books than I used to have. But I have a metric shit ton of books. More than I... <laughs> 
more than I want to have, honestly, that I haven't read. So this is to kind of force me to read my own books and to read the shit before I buy it, right? I think that should be easy enough to do. Um, there is going to be, you know, books that I see at the bookstore on my nights out and stuff that I want to get or gifts I'm more than happy to get, that sort of thing. Um, but I do want to focus on reading those things. I am giving myself leeway with that 40%, so that's okay. I just don't want to keep blind buying things and not liking them and, you know, be out that 20 20 to $30 because books are expensive and honestly for 30 bucks, my family could go out to eat at night, so need to watch this minute. <laughs> so as far as what I want to read next year, I want to read more nonfiction. I want to read more indie books and I want to continue to try to focus in on reading books from marginalized groups as everyone should do, but you know, you don't have to, but you should. Um, I used to read a lot more nonfiction before uh, my daughter was born. I was uh, a very nonfiction driven reader. I read a uh, quite a bit, but uh, when little girl was born, that first year was incredibly difficult for me. And then the next year was also difficult for different reasons. And so I kind of fell out, fell out of it for a bit. Um, just make sure I wasn't ringing again. So I fell out of it and I would like to return to nonfiction and get back into that and read some more of it. I have a ton of really great ones on my shelves that I'm looking forward to reading. Um, so I'll be reading more of that. Um, and as far as indie stuff goes, um, I really specifically want to read a lot more indie fantasy and sci-fi. Uh, when I first started reviewing like 10 years ago, I used to read mainly in those areas, in those fields, in the indie sphere. Um, and I kind of fell out of it uh, with everything going on. So I'd like to revisit it. I follow a bunch of groups on Reddit. Um, I have a bunch of stuff downloaded and I just want to get back into that. I actually picked up one of my indie fantasies. This morning that I want to read, um, Calico Thunder Rides Again. It's a dragon book. <laughs> um, and I also would like to read a lot more indie romance. I have been doing that successfully. Um, actually, look, her little house is sealed. I hope you can see that. Um, I have been doing that pretty successfully this year and I want to keep doing that. Um, I actually find in a lot of, uh, romance, uh, booktubers talk about this, uh, there is a big difference sometimes in what you will find in the indie sphere as opposed to the traditional sphere when it comes to romance. Uh, I find that both interesting um, and a little sad because sometimes traditionally published romances are a little samey. Um, so we'll see. Uh, that is a good chunk of why, or good, I guess, a, what's the word they use? Transition to my uh, reading marginalized groups. Oftentimes their romances are just straight up better. Um, I love like Beverly Jenkins and stuff. So a lot more books from uh, Persons of Color. I want to read more books from people on the LGBTQIA spectrum. Um, more identities like my own, things like that. So um, that shouldn't be too much of a surprise to anyone really in the booktube sphere, I feel. But one it said, that's consciously what I try to do I look for those books because one they're closer to my own lived experiences and sometimes I want that um and two we should be uh lifting those voices up and you know reading those things you can't just read the same old stuff all the time it's honestly boring um anyway so that's like the genres and stuff I wanted to read nonfiction. let's see if I'm missing anything Oh yeah. Uh, so physical books versus ebooks. You will probably see me read a lot of ebooks. Um, I want to read more physical books. However, I have chronic, at this point, chronic pain in my hands. Um, and if I read certain types of physical books, namely tightly bound paperbacks um, and very large chunky hardbacks that are tightly bound, um, it will trigger my chronic pain and I effectively uh, lose that hand for a minimum of two days, typically. Um, I end up having to keep it braced, uh, keep it creamed, and it's very hard to uh, manage that pain with a toddler because <laughs> you're using your hands a lot. I tell you what, so you're probably going to see me read a lot more ebooks. 
Um, that being said, because I'm going to be reading more indie, I do plan on purchasing the physical copies of things once I buy them if I like them enough. Um, because I just feel like that's a better way to support the author and I do love having them on my shelves. So you'll probably see more ebooks than physical books next year. But it's okay, ain't nothing wrong with that. Um, I am getting a Kindle page clicker for Christmas and I am so freaking excited about that. It's really going to help me because there are days and nights where even just holding the screen and constantly using my thumb will flare my uh, pain. So that's something I'm stupid excited about. Um, and the last goal, which a lot of people have, um, is just to read what I have. I have a ton, again, a ton of books, unread books that I haven't read. Um, so I want to read uh, those. I want to read stuff as I buy it too. If it's not something that I have read, if it's that 40% that I'm aiming for that I haven't read, like a pre-order or something I get, say, from Fairy Loot, if I stay subscribed to them, uh, I want to read it um, while I have it. So read what I own again um it's gonna be difficult maybe with the ebook versus physical thing and if it goes down to it i have a library resources and i'm actually considering getting a library card for some of the online libraries you can pay to have the cards and that will help if i can read the ebook version and then i can annotate and go back in and add in my tabs and notes and stuff to the physical versions so that's that's kind of it and like i said again i want to reiterate goals should be something like i like i'm, I'm chatting about them here publicly but like if you make goals for the new year, bookish goals or not, um, good on you. And if you don't meet them, that's okay. Uh, don't beat yourself up about it. It gives you something to strive for next year. And you can always modify on the go. Change your goals as you go. Um, the last few years, that has been very much the case for me. <laughs> I have to change as I go. And you know what? I'm flexible. That's fine. I am learning with uh, a lot of... You know, critical thinking and self-reflection and medication that it's okay to be flexible. Um, so that's it for goals. I got some of Beanie's stuff done. So she uh, painted two ornaments. She painted four, but I got two of them done. <laughs> um, and I got this little house sealed. So I'm putting, in case anybody's wondering, um, my daughter loves to paint. The first time she painted, uh, she was maybe one first time I put a little paintbrush in her hand and just said go to town and ever since then she's loved painting so she paints stuff for fun on the weekends with us and I had to paint some Christmas stuff and then she painted this shout as she says shout so I'm gonna mod podge these keep doing that and finish this up and uh, I'll report back to you guys probably in a day or two with a review we can review um, and then I think we'll be my most anticipated books for 2023 coming soon but that's it thanks for watching guys and I'll talk to you again next time bye Derner, derner, derner. Oh man, can I do it? Can I get it in the frame? Derner, derner.